This tutorial is to give you a guide on how to use the new 360 feature on uh, the Cockpit 3D software. Um, and we're going to use this Kiwi Bird here. Uh, it's an order that was uh, just recently placed and we can use this as a demo. Um, what you're going to want to do is on the Cockpit 3D login of where you enter your orders on the order portal, uh, you'll notice that you now have the option of selecting CI 360. So if you have a customer that wants to have a photo converted to 360, um, you can select that one and have it done. And your costing can be seen uh, directly on the uh, costing page um, uh, once you've logged in. All right, so um, this here is a 360 file that we've just uh, opened up. Let me just go to a larger view here. Uh, if we go to our settings, um, you'll notice that under the rasterizer type, we now have three options. We have projection, x-ray, and portrait. Um, so this tutorial is on how to use the uh, x-ray feature. Um, but for, before I do that, I just, I'm going to keep it on projection. I just want to show you what happens when you uh, keep it at your regular settings as you would for any regular 3D 180 and click on go. It will actually treat it like a uh, 180 file. So if we turn it to the side, um, it has not seen very much of what was behind uh, this Kiwi bird. Uh, most of it was hidden, and so therefore um, it could only see or create point clouds for what it could see because we were projecting from the uh, front under our regular rasterizer. However, with the uh, new feature called X-Ray, X-Ray, uh, this will be able to um, look right through or see right through the model, find the geometry on the back side, and start creating point clouds for it. Uh, and work its way forward and do and do exactly that. Um, what you're going to want to do is your point space settings first and foremost are normally uh, somewhere around 07 and 07 um, because there's going to be a lot more points coming from many directions. Um, I would change this here to uh, 10, just space it out a little bit. Um, if we go to our geometry settings, um, let's go to X-ray. And when we're in X-ray, you'll notice that we have our layer count at 8. Our Z factor is now at 2, not at 5. Um, and our diffuse is at 1. If you find that things are cracking, uh, you might want to increase your Z factor. Or keep your Z factor at 2 and just increase the um, Z point spacing from point, point 0.1 to point 0.11 or point 0.12. And just kind of find that sweet spot for it. And then you'll know what works best for your laser when you're doing 360s. Um, all right, let's go back to um, the X-ray here. So in X-ray, you'll see that we have three different options. We have directional, multi-project, and surface normal. Um, we have three different options. Uh, I'll start with surface normal. So on surface normal, uh, what's happening is it is, think of it like a camera. What's happening is the camera is shooting uh, and creating points based on the direction that each polygon in this model is facing. So this model is made up of many, many polygons. This, the polygon on this side is facing that way. The polygon on this side is facing that way. Um, so what we do is we look at each individual polygon and we, cr we create a point uh, in that direction. Um, now, depending on your model, um, certain options will work better than others. So let's actually take a look and see how this one turns out. So if we use surface normal and click on go, OK, there's our model. When I decrease the brightness, I'm only decreasing the brightness of my view on my screen. It's kind of like going to my screen and pushing the buttons to um, decrease the brightness of my screen. but what I'm doing is, is I'm actually using the control and the open and close bracket buttons next to the letter P uh, to just control what I, how I can view it. And that's, that's on our introduction tutorial, just some of the sim simple, uh, uh, simple short keys. Um, OK, so anyhow, um, if we look at this now from all sides, we can see the Kiwi bird from all sides. Now, was this the best option? Um, maybe not. Let's uh, take a look at if we were to use multi-project under x-ray. So multi-project will project uh, points in up to three directions. Um, it's calculated to figure those directions out optimally. 
and there we go. And now we can actually see that it's starting to look a little sharper too. So for this model, we're noticing that, you know, we're probably not going to be using surface normal. Um, we might be using multi-project because it did make it uh, a little sharper. But let's try directional. So directional meaning that it's only going to create uh, points uh, looking at it from, in this case, the frontal direction. Okay? But you can choose your direction. So let's click on Go. And you can see that this here is the sharpest, actually. So for this model with a lot of curves, it seems like uh, using the directional front uh, worked out to be the best. Um, if the model perhaps had uh, was more with flat surfaces uh, and we kept it on this setting, we might have not been too happy with the side views, maybe the textures wouldn't have been as clear on the side and perhaps we would have wanted to use multi-project to surface normal because it would have given us the same level of quality when looking at it, at it from you know, the left side as it would from the right side as it would from the front. Um, so it just depends on the model and really what your objective is. But I highly recommend you experiment with it because there's really no hard and fast rule. Um, the other thing is optimizing this. So, you know, we've talked about what makes a good final quality image in a crystal. So there's three things I always talk about. There's one, which is the way in which you optimize the file. So optimizing means using Photoshop, and I'll currently do an optimization with this 360 shortly. Two is your point space settings. So we've talked about that. We've given you a lot of guidance on that in, uh, in our tutorials. And three is on your laser power. So, you know, you could have the brightest image with the tightest point space settings and hardly see the image in the crystal because your laser power is very weak. So um, that is something you would control with your laser by increasing the uh, volts or the amps. But <clears throat> uh, the other two are controlled in the software. So in this case, this Kiwi bird, we've already identified our point space settings, but we haven't done the optimization. So let's optimize it. Now, when we're optimizing a 360 file, the texture file that's going to open up in Photoshop looks different. Uh, it looks like this here. It's wrapped. So if you wanted to um, brighten, for example, the face of this bird, you would have to look for the face. I see here is one side of the face and here's the other side of the face. And then you could use your brush and color dodge each side of the face. Um, if you wanted to color dodge the body or the tail, Maybe the feet, you can see them there. You have to look for it manually. In most cases, the easiest way to do this would be to do two things, two quick steps. Well, three quick steps. One is change it to grayscale. Even though it looks like it's grayscale, it's, it's not. So click on grayscale. The second is to go to your curves and brighten the entire image. And the third, which I think is you know uh, a secret sauce in and of itself, is using this unsharp tool. If you go to unsharp mask, and play with these top two bars here. Just watch this image here, okay? Without it, it looks like this. And with it on, it looks like that. You can see that it makes it kind of pop a little bit. It looks a little sharper and better contrast. So this unsharp tool and fiddling around with these two um, bars here is uh, makes, makes a, a really big difference in terms of the quality of, of what you're putting into Crystal. Um, what you want to do then is these two layers, you're just going to merge them, and then we're going to save the file. And now we can minimize this and refresh this, and let's take a look at the bird. And there we go. If we just click on Go Now, and this here should look fantastic in Crystal. Um, you might be wondering why this bird doesn't have wings. It's, it's actually a bird that uh, has the uh, map of, I believe it was New Zealand, I was told. Uh, so it's intended to be this way um, by the customer. Um, but hopefully this tutorial uh, is a good starting point to give you a guide on how to use uh, Cockpit 3D to uh, create point clouds for your 360 orders with us.